So here I have an ob so here I have an obfuscated VBS script which is used to load an Xworm payload. I've opened up the file in Visual Studio Code and I'm going to show you how I would decode it. So I've opened it up and the first thing that I can see are all of these really weird looking characters which look like non-standard text. And second thing I can see are these replace operations which look like they're replacing the non-standard characters with real characters. So my first thought here is that I could use Cyberchef to try and do the find and replace manually, but this is actually quite a pain when the characters are not standard texts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the point where all of the replace operations have been completed, and then instead of allowing the code to run, I'm actually going to print the results to the screen. So I can do that by looking for the end of the code where the deobfuscated content is being run and luckily here that looks like it's this spot where this camera.run something is being executed so to print this out what i'm going to do is i'm going to comment out that last line and since this is vbs i can add a w script.echo and as an argument i want to add whatever was being executed at the very end which is this thing here so i can copy that and put it into the w script.echo I can save the script and I can try and run it inside of a command prompt. So if I open up a CMD, I can say wscript.exe xworm.vbs and here we can see the decoded output on the screen. But the problem here is that this is really difficult to copy and paste when it comes up in a message box. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use cscript.exe and what that will do is display the output within the command line instead of showing a message box. So from here we can copy out the results, hit control C, and we can open up a new window and try to analyze it. So something has gone wrong there, and I think it's because I've turned the zoom up so high. So what I'm going to do is actually run this again, and I'm going to copy the output a second time. So I'm going to copy that into my Visual Basic code. Actually it looks right, but code has applied the wrong language mode, so we don't want this text that it's applied we want to apply not vbs we want powershell because this is a powershell command which we know from this powershell reference here so now that we have that we can begin looking through this obfuscated code this kind of looks like base 64 but not quite if we scroll down to the end of this blob we can see the code responsible for decoding it and if we give this a quick scan we can see that it's doing another replace operation for this string here and it's replacing it with the character a and then the result is executed by another powershell what we can do is we can take this entire blob we can open up cyberchef we can do a find and replace operation on this string over here and then we can apply a from base 64 and hopefully we'll have a decoded result if i go ahead and copy this entire string I can open up Cyberchef. I can do a from base 64 just to see if anything comes out of it. And the answer to that is no, it doesn't. So first what we need to do is we need to replicate that replace operation and we can do that with a find and replace. And if we go back to our original script, this is the string being replaced and the uppercase A is the value that it's being replaced by. So we can go ahead and play paste in this string here and then put the replace value as a character a and now if we apply our from base 64 we get a decoded script now this is actually in utf 16 and we know that because of all of these null bytes in between each of the characters so what we can do here is just remove null bytes or we could also do decode text and utf 16 both work exactly the same so now that i have this i can go ahead and copy that into another text editor and I can try and work out what's going on. Um, there's a lot of lines of code here which could really be improved with new lines and I don't want to do all of this manually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a beautifier and I'm going to use generic code beautify. Now generic code beautify actually does break PowerShell code but we don't need to execute the code yet so that should be fine. And yeah, we can see that there's spaces here added between the some of the names of things that PowerShell uses, and this actually breaks it. So even though this is much more readable, this actually isn't executable anymore unless we fix up things like this. But that doesn't matter for now. So we can see a function named download data from links, which is opening up a web client object. 
It's going through some links and it's attempting to download some data of some form. And then it's returning that downloaded data. We can see the variable links here with two URLs which are contacted by the sample. We can see that over here. And then at the end of the code, we can see that within the downloaded data, it's looking for string base64 start and also base64 end. It's grabbing the data in between those two flags. It's applying a from base64 operation. And then the result is loaded into memory via assembly.load. And then once the assembly is loaded, it is assigned to this loaded assembly variable. And then this type is accessed and this method is executed with these arguments here. This looks like potentially another URL that's been reversed. So we can go ahead to Cyberchef and we can apply a reverse operation to decode that. Here we have a third URL and we now know the purpose of the script, which is essentially to download, to try and download XWorm from one of these two URLs. The XWorm is stored in some base64 content, which is base64 decoded, loaded into memory, and then provided with these arguments, which potentially are downloading another file. Not 100% sure, but we can download the file later and take a look.